G'day, how's it going? I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and this is my second channel, Self Sufficient Me 2. You might also be seeing this natively uploaded to Facebook if I can get it on Facebook. I mean, it's such a hassle. Sometimes I have no idea why, but Facebook just won't accept my upload and it'll go into a SPAC tax, so there won't be a video uploaded to that. But this is going to be a off the cuff standard walk around video behind the scenes type of look of what's been going on lately and yes if i can get it on facebook i will natively as well so that it just plays properly there without being linked back to youtube but that's the whole idea of this channel is to do these different types of videos a bit of old style i mean i used to do off the cuff videos on self-sufficient me the proper channel but i've found that through the statistics a lot of people weren't enjoying them and rather than sort of fill people's feed with things they didn't want to see and ultimately them get sick of it I decided to create this second channel to put a lot of this type of content on there for those people who really do want to see it and they can then be subscribed to both channels and get that extra feed plus I allow this early to my patreon supporters you get to have a look at it first. It's just an easier way to share content, let you guys know what's going on. I'm also gonna be just doing some random stuff on this channel, some fun stuff that different types of content, like maybe even fishing, things that I haven't done a lot before, and that might not interest you as a core group either, and that's fine, you just won't watch it. But it allows me to experiment, having this second channel, and just to, also have a little bit of fun myself. Oh, look, I always have fun, but to put a little bit of different content on YouTube without having that worry that it's going against the grain on my proper original channel and upsetting people too much. So that's the whole idea. Anyway, without too much more rambling on, let's just have a look around and I'll show you the behind the scenes. It's a fair bit of a mess. I just finished recording a podcast i'm not sure if that will come out before this video or not all right anyway enough talking about the administration side i'm just going to get behind the camera now and just show you what's been happening here here's the trellis tunnel and like i was saying in the podcast i was talking a bit about this tunnel and i won't go over the same stuff but i'll just let you know how things are going I'll just tilt the camera down a bit, give you a good look at these radishes. These are a diacon radish that are coming up. I just had to pause that for a second because that dog was going off and that's just annoying. I've got tomatoes on this side and they're starting to come up nicely. Remember we are in winter for the subtropics and it's a good time of year to grow tomatoes. And in this side of the tomatoes, I've got just standard veggies. The radish here, the Japanese radish or Asian radish, it's a big radish root, big white one. And some turnips in here. This is also a white turnip. This is a lemon coriander. And this is a native ginger, native to Australia. It's called red back ginger. Apparently you can eat the berries. I haven't tried the berries yet either. And back on this side, we've got the peas that are coming up and the beetroot on this side. In the middle, celerac. That's surplus celerac all down the middle here now that I've just transplanted from the front bed over here. That had a heap come up. And then these peas are doing very well. Pretty much I think every pea that I sowed has come up. About two inches apart and I'm um, hoping for a good ton of peas 
up this trellis here to about that height. You can see this center patch here is died back. That's turmeric over there. Of course, I've got to fix all this up from the video the other day. Refurbish this bed, replace the posts. So it's a fair mess in here at the moment. And that's because I removed those garden beds and I'm making new ones. Potted up a whole bunch of plants from plants that we've salvaged from getting rid of these garden beds. Getting some good quality veggies in these containers. You've got a tomato plant here, a yacon, a cabbage, and a sweet potato growing out the back here. That's self-seeded. Obviously there's a little bit of root that was left in the pot when I refurbished it and planted a few other things. So you've got a big mixture there in that, con in that container. But over here is where we're going to be concreting and extending the pathway around where the dog is. Extend the pathway around. Been meaning to do this for years. Around there and then this is where I remove that stump. It's going to go straight through there and to the edge of the shed and back. And so all this area is going to be concreted in and that's where I can start doing my potting experiments, extend my nursery. Instead of having them hang off the tank, I can do something else here. I'm even gonna put in a few benches and have a working area for potting up plants and even filleting fish and that type of thing. Have it drained back into here underneath this, this mulberry tree. And uh, yeah, it should work really, really well. You can see, I told you this is a behind the scenes thing. Got a whole heap of wood that was thrown down from the top deck. And a lot of it is good second hand wood. I've had my boys pulling out the nails and they're putting it into this pile here. And once they're all denailed, we'll either store them in the shed or maybe at the back once this area has been concreted in and make a storage pile out the back there. And then I can use it for all these other projects like building more garden beds, refurbishing the compost piles down the back, and fixing a lot of things up with, you know, that recycled wood. All these piles here, hello, hello. That's all, that will all be going, that won't be wasted that'll all be going into the garden here just like I did with that raised bed building at least two more along here and maybe another thin row or a second row along here depending on how much wood I've got but I'll be definitely redoing this one of course but this long one here it's had its day as well I can show you actually the other side You can see it from here. See the, it's just all completely rotten through. And plus it's just, I, I hate it that it's, it's only two sleepers high. See that? Completely rotten. And I'm going to cut that in half basically and raise it up to probably about 80 centimeters that height and that'll make for a much more practical for me anyway garden bed to manage little experiments going on in here this one obviously has to be refurbed as well just like that other one the posts I've, I've bodged the post up so many times over the years that it just can't bodge it up anymore it just has to be replaced. The steel itself is fine. The iron sheeting, it's good. Good strong stuff. And so I'll just screw it into 
fencing posts. Jerusalem artichoke here dying back. I'm surprised it's still alive actually, because the other ones died back fully on the other bed. But that one came up, came up a bit late. But mainly this bed was used for jicama or jicama. They're the poisonous seed pods that you can regrow the plant from. And it produces these tubers here. Be digging this up soon. Digging it up and uh, we'll be eating it and doing a video on growing jicama, jicama do, whatever you call it. This here is, um, it's an Asian veg, the Kangkong. It uh, likes a lot of water, but hates winter and it's dying back, but that does flower and produce seeds that regrows itself. And then also we've got the end of the Jerusalem artichoke that was growing in here, which can be now dug up. And I think I'm gonna ferment a whole bunch of it this, this year again, because I just love it fermented. This bed here, I've got some tomatoes growing. These are a dwarf variety of tomato. And I'm growing them for an experiment. It's gonna be the copper wire experiment again, just quietly. And we'll see how that goes. I wanna redo that experiment because I've got a lot of heat from the copper experiment on the other channel um, because people said that I didn't use, um, I used insulated wire and no matter what I said, People didn't believe me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna really change it up and get, I got some new copper online. Without spoiling the whole thing, it should be a pretty entertaining video. This Thai basil is a magnificent crop, magnificent plant. I've had to cut it back severely, but uh, wow, it's a, good, it's, a, it's a fantastic plant. I mean, not only tastes good and great in Asian dishes, but it's a magnificent plant for bees. It's perpetual, perpetually in flower, and the native and honey bees just love it. So it provides food pretty much all year round. It grows good in winter and summer here, just continually. What a, what a plant. I love those types of plants that can grow all year round in the subtropics. Got mint coming on now. Now that the weather's cooling down, it's coming back with a vengeance. And here are the zucchinis. These ones here are zucchinis. This is a squash. Squash is looking a bit pale. And I don't know why. I've given it a bit of extra feed to try to green it up. But nah, it's, uh, it's suffering a bit. But then I probably should say this isn't really the, the time of year to be trying to grow squash and zucchini. It's a little bit too late. But if I can get a crop going through winter, It'll be great because the grubs and the insects and especially the fruit fly won't be attacking it. And the fruit fly do tend to like getting into the yellow squash. But through winter, fruit fly aren't active. And if I can nail it and grow them through winter, that'll be great. And I've been finishing, filling up any gaps like here. Um, I haven't done that yet, but that, that was a squash that died off. I've been filling them in with other crops, like filling the gaps with this cabbage. Yeah, so in a way, the patch is thriving, and in another way, the, the yard is a mess and needs a lot of work and tidied up. Do you want to have a bit of a quick run through the fruit trees? Come on, let's have a quick look through there. It's mainly the citrus that are flourishing at the moment. You're just gonna have to forgive the mess. That's what Renault's does, and because of this COVID thing, you haven't had the builders out here all the time either. It's been a bit of disruption, so it's taking longer than it should. But here's a marsh grapefruit. 
Don't worry about a bit of sooty mold here on the on the grapefruit, doesn't hurt it at all. Don't have to go crazy spraying it or anything. It still produces a ton of fruit every year and the fruit is beautiful. Marsh grapefruit. That's a Rio red grapefruit and it has a red center. I think I've put a picture on Instagram of that and that um, and it has a comparison. It's had a bug on me then. And a couple of small, that's a uh, Valencia, a seedless one. Just an, another new plant. That's a, a lemon lime cross, I think. Not doing too well, but it'll get there. Put a bit of mulch around it, it'll work. The Tahitian lime is, of course, going gangbusters. Like, I can't keep up. As I said in my podcast, I've been using as many limes as possible. You can see how many are all over the ground. I've been picking them up and and using them in cordial, making cordial with them and everything I can. So I did about 200 yesterday and obviously I've got lots more to, to still pick up and, and juice and whatever. I froze a whole heap as well. And then you can use them like little ice cubes in drinks, frozen in cut halves use them in cocktails or whatever but you can see that the tree has still got plenty of fruit on it it's always in fruit what a fantastic citrus tree this is just one of my favorite of all times lane's late navel and because it's ripening a bit later than the other ones through here which i'll show you in a minute it didn't get as damaged or as bad fruit drop from those moths. We had a moth, a citrus moth um, explosion. First time I've seen it. And they were dropping the fruit no end. You know, a lot of this is because of the fruit, because of that moth damage underneath the tree. They suck on the fruit and, and pretty well kill it overnight. Um, but because this ripens later, the moths are gone now. Uh, we're going to get a good crop out of this Lane's Lake Navel. But the Washington Navel is over through over here. It's got, I think, one, one fruit left on it. We got nothing off it this season because it ripened early and the moths just plague proportioned all over it and smashed it. But the Valencia next to it is still green and that'll ripen the latest. It's a small orange, but as you know, Valencia's a uh, really good squeeze and uh, we'll get a big crop of oranges out of that again we just about every year you get a fantastic crop this is the famous Maya lemon again another beautiful fruit tree that is just strewn with fruit look after it give it a good mulch you know every couple of years give it fertilizer every year good citrus fertilizer and uh, yeah, this one, this tree isn't perfect, but it's, it's producing a lot of fruit. But you know, you get the odd leaf deficiency here and there, a um, bit of die back here and there, but don't be overly concerned that your tree doesn't look perfect. You can't be going trying to chase a perfect tree, otherwise you'll end up sort of killing it with love. Too much fertilizer, too much trace elements. I mean, sure, if you can get the perfect tree, and, and we have had stages throughout here where a tree is looking absolutely magic with not a bug on it not a problem beautiful fruit but it's kind of rare when you're trying to manage a full big orchard like this to have trees without some blemishes on them i mean that is close to perfect that valencia orange you know but and what i'm saying is it's rare to get a complete perfect citrus tree so don't think that there's something wrong if your tree has a few blemishes or a few squiggly lines or a few eaten leaves or a few leaves that have uh, some yellow tinges to it or a few mineral deficiencies. It's not the end of the world and they'll still live on and produce well. This is a, a sunrise lime. It was produced by the CSIRO. And you can just eat them like this. They're quite sweet. 
just chew them with a sweet skin. A few seeds, but it's nice just eating like this. Mmm. There's a seed. Mmm. Really delicious. Nice just cut up on cakes or, you know, even in a salad. Mmm. It's good. Looks like a fair few fruit ripe now too. Better start picking them before they just all fall off. These olives are all going to get cut back this season. Like I mean, I'm going to chop them big time. This is this wash. No, that's that's the imperial mandarin. That also got hit by the moths. Tangerine, that also got hit by the moths. Lost a lot of fruit off that, but sending a young tree. This is the Washington orange tree that usually is a fantastic producer for us. Buggered, one orange left down the bottom here. One orange. That's all I can see at the moment, but yeah, I'm afraid. The moths got all of them. I've already picked up a lot of that fruit and thrown it in the compost. This is interesting. This is the first season that our pepper plant here has flowered. We've got little pepper corns coming on, starting to ripen. We'll have our first pepper. Not a big harvest, but it's pepper nevertheless. I've had to put this mesh over it because the possums were destroying the tree or the vine. I'm gonna probably take it off now that it's matured a bit more and hopefully the possums will leave it alone. It's the coffee. Obviously growing nicely in this situation because it's sheltered a bit in a bit of a rainforest type situation. dragon fruit. I won't show you the whole orchard or anything but you can see what a type of jungle it is. I'm going to be cutting back all these mangoes as well. Being ruthless this season. Cutting them all back and mulching straight back underneath the tree. Mulching back on itself. That'll be a good video too I think. This is a little sunrise lime. I think I've picked all them off. Beautiful fruit. Oh, not sunrise lime, it's a native lime. A dark purple fruit. This is a star apple. Bought it as a young seedling tree. Not sure if it'll ever fruit, but it, it's a big tree now. It's a very attractive tree and it should eventually fruit. Well, I'm hoping in the next year or so. But anyway, the orchard is getting quite mature these days. This is a peach, an angel peach. Again, I'm going to cut this back because it's too hard to manage. You have to net this, these types of trees and stone fruit here or the fruit fly just destroy it really quickly. Even the young fruit, even if it's nowhere near ripe, it'll get destroyed. So the only way to stop it is the bag or fruit the or net the whole fruit tree altogether. And plus cutting these trees back a bit will help me with my maneuveration, maneuverability around the yard here as I find my way back. Nashy pear. Tamarello. Yeah. Whew. Lots of little spiders around.
down the back here, the asparagus is in its last throws because it's going into hibernation for winter. I'll cut this back. Once it all dies back, I'll cut it back. I'll put some, maybe some cow manure and some fertilizer in there, mulch it up and let it come back in spring and it'll come back with a vengeance even stronger. Got some blueberries here. I've just put this pipework around, a bit of irrigation, a loose irrigation system to give it a bit of extra water. And I've just planted some raspberries in this bed. Hopefully they won't escape like my last lot did and start growing raspberries everywhere. That's why I've put them in a raised bed this time. So they can multiply and come up as much as they like, but they'll be contained. Some pigeon pea, lots of bananas on the go. Yeah, and of course plenty of pawpaws going down to the poultry area down the back there. It's not a lot to report about that, but all going well. I think that'll do as a wrap up behind the scenes what's been happening, kind of what's growing in the garden at the moment. Long lengthy type video, me umming and ahhing all the way through it. But I know a lot of you guys do want this type of content. And that's why, like I said at the start, these types of videos, um, although they might not be popular and big hits on YouTube, they're still very informative, um, if I do say so myself. But it's what people have been asking for, and particularly those who really just want a, an easy walk around and a behind the scenes look whether you're inquisitive or whether you want to just get that extra bit of information and have that more candid type look and chat. Uh, whatever the reasoning, I appreciate you signing up to Self Sufficient Me Too and giving me this opportunity to bring this type of content to you. So thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.